Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everybody, this is Rob Scribner and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Been a great week. Been, uh, I want to talk a little bit about Costco. I want to talk a little bit about tiny homes and RVs. So let's get going. Well, if you guys have been uh, watching our videos, you probably see that recently we just came out with a video about uh, shopping at Costco. Now, it turned out to be kind of a funny video. I think Sherry and I spent more time with the free samples than anything, but uh, what I did want to talk about was I did purchase a new computer. And uh, one thing I got to tell you, that Costco is, uh, you never know when you can find a great deal. So I've been eyeing and scoping out a HP Pavilion, which is a all-in-one computer. And I wanted something with a bigger screen because uh, I seem to be aging and it seems to... Uh, uh, be nicer to have a bigger screen because it's getting harder and harder to see the small text and stuff. And uh, my little laptop, which I love to death, which is a HP uh, NV360, they call it, uh, been great. Still have it. Still going to use it. And uh, uh, you know, it's just, uh, but it's just small. And so I, I thought it'd be kind of nice to get something bigger. Well, I was looking at them at Best Buy, which they were about twelve ninety five. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's a good chunk of change, so I didn't buy one right away. And then my daughter contacted us the other day and says, Hey, Mom and Dad, you want to meet me at Costco? And it's like, oh, geez, I haven't renewed my membership for quite a while. So, you know, it's going to be 50 bucks right off the bat just to renew my membership. But it's like, yeah, I'd like to go because I'd like to go look at their electronics. So, sh lo and behold, I go in there and I first thing you do is see electronics. Went over to the computers, and guess what? The HP Pavilion right there, the 7i, um, sitting there for $9.95 or $9.99 is about $250 cheaper. So guess what I ended up spending <laughs> money on? So today I'm trying to get uh, it's integrated with our podcast, so I'm also trying to coordinate this podcast with the new computer here. And so there's a few gadgets and things that I'm so used to with the laptop. Uh, I might make some, uh, pro I have a little bit of a problem here, but it's going good so far. And uh, the big screen's nice and it um, doesn't make me feel so old because <laughs> I don't have to squint. <laughs> so, yeah, new computer, went to Costco, had lots of fun. And uh, we joked about because you go to Costco, how can you be a minimalist and go to Costco? <laughs> And just joking about that, but uh, yeah, it it was and and of course you save money on bulk. Well, we only bought like six items, and it still cost us twelve hundred dollars. So, yeah, I still have to admit, once you get past the membership thing, that there's definitely some good deals there. Uh, so hard to buy bulk stuff when you're living in an RV full time like we are, but you know, uh, I highly recommend if. Uh, you haven't been to Costco for a while. Uh, if anything, go there before lunch to so get lots of samples to try. And uh, go look around. You may be surprised what you can find that uh, could save you some money. So, yeah, we're really happy. Uh, they also recommend it's always a good idea to download some of these apps. So, uh, I told you early in a couple of shows that I downloaded the uh, Safeway app for grocery shopping. And that's what we have here in the West Coast. And... I got to tell you, it's been saving me a lot of money. Of course, shopping at Safeway, I also get a discount on my diesel for my truck. So I think for every hundred bucks, you get a ten cents off. And so, yeah, I mean, if I'm not driving a lot, I can usually by the time I have to fill up again, I can get fifty, sixty, seventy cents off my uh, diesel. And that's that's nice. And uh, it's only for twenty five gallons, but uh, if I'm not driving a lot, that'll take me for a couple of weeks. Um, but yeah. But it's the same thing with uh, Costco, Walmart, Targets. Uh, I highly recommend that you download their apps. Uh, there's definitely advantages of having their apps. You actually do see sales that other people don't normally see. 
And especially with the grocery shopping thing, I can get coupons added to my card, which is just a shopping card. It's not a credit card. And, uh, boy, I go through the register, see at the end, and see I've got a whole bunch of coupons uh, applied to things that I bought. And so the old days of collecting coupons are gone. It's now apps. And so, yep, it's the new thing. <laughs> it's a so, yeah, uh, Costco, give it a shot. Get yourself the app, too. Well, this week I wanted to talk about something that I don't truly understand completely. And if you've been following our Facebook, you can see that I put a post out there asking people, what the heck is the difference, of course my phone going off again, between a tiny home and an RV? Because if you look at tiny homes, they build them on trailers. And so they're considered RVs. So... I'm tr- I, I'm going to be open minded. I'm going and, and I want to talk about both, and so I did get quite a few comments uh, from all kinds of folks. But what I don't know, and I really, for example, if I wanted a tiny house, let's say I own property, uh, which by the way you cannot buy property the same way you buy a house. Uh, the banks are a little funny about that. And what I'm kind of curious is like, can you do construction loans? Like have a small house or tiny house built on a piece of property and do like a construction loan program like you do with a house uh that's my first question i do not know the answer to that and once again i ask you guys in the comments uh or send us emails about this kind of stuff and i'd like to continue talking about this for a while so a lot of people especially young folks and stuff though Think that, oh yeah, those tiny house and minimalist living, which is nothing wrong with that, is a, that would be a great idea to get a nice little piece of property and have some, uh, and throw one of those on there and do it. And, and the problem is, it's not that easy. For example, uh, and I can only talk about pretty much Oregon because I'm from Central Oregon and I almost had a house built. And, uh, you know, the, there's requirements and ordinances that you have to abide by in order to have a house put on a piece of property. Now, if you keep an, a, a tiny house on the trailer like it's built on, typically they're built on, then it's considered an RV. And in many, 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 almost all circumstances, I don't know where it's different any place else, you cannot live in an RV on a piece of property. Uh, you say, well, that's not fair. It's my property. Well, yeah, it's just there's ordinances. Uh, I don't understand all the rules and regulations about that. But like in Central Oregon, when you buy property there, uh, you you will break a city or re, or county ordinances saying that that's not a permanent structure, and it could be because it's not tied into taxes and things like that. Now. If I had a, t- if I had a tiny house on a foundation, of course that's not mobile anymore. Is that considered a house? And then there's also like there's ordinances like if you build a, a, a like a shack or like a little utility shack or something that's under 400 square feet, you don't have to get a permit for that. Uh, but tiny houses sometimes will need utilities does that change that ordinance for example if i need to get electricity set up to it or if i want to have uh, a septic put in or if i want to have a city uh, water brought in things like that or do i do want i mean is it or can i just put a tiny house on a piece of property that is on a foundation which makes it legal to be on that property if it's under 400 square feet which a lot of the tiny houses are and I collect my own rainwater, do my own solar, and uh, uh, using like a uh, kind of went blank there for a second. A composting toilet um, is that legal? Can I do that? What keeps me from doing that? And so I got a lot of research to do. It's not th- something I want to do. A a Less than 400 square foot home is just not appealing to me at my age. Maybe if I was younger, uh, perhaps, but uh, uh, not for me. So 
can you get this tiny home or tiny houses away from the category of RV and then still meet city and county ordinances to put them on a piece of property? Or do you always have to put a tiny house or home on leased property like an RV park or uh, something uh, equivalent to that? Uh, that's where I get kind of confused on. And so if, if, and if nine times out of 10, you always fall under the RV category, well, what's the use of getting a tiny home uh, when you can get a beautiful RV with slides and have so much more space and have them so well designed for all types of things? Now, of course, uh, RVs aren't necessarily designed for long-term living where a tiny house is kind of designed um, more with normal appliances and things that are uh, designed for long-term uh, usage. Uh, so anyway, it's really a fascinating uh, conversation to have. And uh, I keep seeing the tiny house uh, movement going on, but I know that they've got to be having trouble where you can put those. And of course, you know, you can't just be in a neighborhood where there's a bunch of normal houses and right in the middle of that is a tiny house. Uh, then you got the other proper um, property value issues and neighbors uh, uh, going to court and running to the city, you know, uh, city and filing uh, protests and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of issues that I know have to be uh, a concern with this tiny house movement. And uh, I would love and if somebody even like to be interviewed on, uh, on our radio show here to talk about it. Uh, very open about that. I, I'm curious. I'm, I'm very, very curious. Now, I'm getting all kinds of comments, and, and some of them are, uh, I don't know if they're actually legally uh, uh, information that I could pass along saying, yes, you can do this or not, but I sure would like to have find a, a tiny home expert that would love to talk about tiny homes on our show. Because I mean, there's a lot of things in common as far as uh, living smaller, uh, minimalist living, uh, living simple. Uh, I can't say to myself that living in a small, uh, tiny house to me doesn't sound simple because it's constantly taking down, moving, uh, putting things back. Um, it's constantly that. I, maybe it's an age thing, but it's kind of nice like to have a computer table and stuff and be able to leave the computer up and certain things like that. Especially like us, we do a podcast. I I like to keep my microphone and all that stuff up and installed so we uh, I can uh, do my show whenever I can and not have to spend a half hour just setting up equipment and readjusting everything. So, yeah, uh, I'd love to hear your opinion on that. And please, uh, I'm not... This isn't just this show I'm going to talk about. I want to, as I find out more, uh, I want to pass it along and love to share it with everybody. I guess the other thing I want to also bring up in this conversation is, is long-term usage. Uh, is it safe to say that tiny homes are designed for people to live in for a long time, more durable than, say, an RV that is not necessarily designed for long-term full-time living? Uh, they're more of a travel Type of, and they stay in that definition. And are they even built? Uh, is an RV even built really for full-time living, as as opposed to a tiny house? And you know, and so we're talking quality items too. Um, so yeah, and then of course you, I still you got the issue of <clears throat> what utilities do you or do you not have that is a benefit or is not a benefit to having a tiny home. So yeah, anyway. <laughs> Uh, these questions will just keep popping in my head, and I know it's a great conversation, and I know that it'd be really nice, and I'll, I'll be looking for someone to be willing to talk in the show about it, or at least give us some data. So, yeah, I appreciate it. So, yeah, I totally got a different change of subject here a little bit. I wanted to talk about Cinder, or Chocolate Lab, a little bit, and just tell you something that I tried for the first time, and I was actually pretty impressed. So... A lot of you folks probably have little dogs or, or medium-sized dogs or a full-size dog like Cinder. Or she's like a chocolate lab. And so, uh, you know, there's no doubt. I mean, we take really good care of Cinder. 
uh, the, probably the hardest thing to do in an RV is to give her a bath. And so I tried for the very first time uh, one of those Petco's where for I think it was $35 to have her get her, uh, uh, we have her toenails trimmed and we uh, had her get a bath and they clean her ears and, and, and groom them and, um, and blow, look, I thought it was kind of silly to do a blow drying with cinder, but they did it. So anyway, I took her in. She, it took about an hour, so I went shopping at what way she was doing that. And uh, I can't say that it's really affordable after the fact that once you drop them off, you go shopping and buy a bunch of stuff you probably didn't need. Or uh, So, yeah, so you end up spending lots of money that day. But anyway, uh, uh, got her, picked her up. Uh, it was, uh, and by the way, that's a great place to get your poopy bags. Don't forget your poopy bags um, at Petco. Uh, yeah, it was a good deal. I, I, Cinder is all soft and fluffy and clean, and you can get even more elaborate uh, bathings for dog, like toy dogs that <laughs> you like don't put fragrances on them and stuff like that. It's like I don't think so. Not for Cinder. Um, I have been known to put chocolate shampoo on her just because I thought it'd be funny, and she really did smell like chocolate. Uh, but that was real practical. But besides, it's just harder and hack to give her a bath in the RV. I put her in the shower, and she's good about it. And But it's, you know, a lot of hair goes on the sink, and it's not real roomy, and she can kind of scratch things up a little bit. Um, and I get probably more soaked than she does. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of recommend that if you ever, uh, when you're out and about, pet coats are everywhere, and I think you can probably go to Pet Smart too and get that service done. And uh, give it a try. It worked out good. Of course, there's a lot of private places you could go to and uh, maybe even get it for a better price. But, uh, yeah, I was impressed. It worked well. Cinder uh, didn't seem too devastated. And I got a nice, clean, shiny dog. And since she does sleep with us, it's nice to have a dog that smells good. <laughs> so, yeah. And also staying with the you know the subject of pets, I still find, I find it still very amazing how many people we meet and of course you know this is winter time so all these RVers are coming down here and there's people coming down here with four I think I've seen as high as five small dogs with them in an RV and that's got to be total dog madness um, I don't know how they do it and, and it's great they're all happy dogs they're t uh, you can see they're taken care of um, it's Still, to me, it's like that seems like a lot of dogs to manage, but uh, I, I, and I've seen as many, and I, I've seen many times now the Great Danes uh, that are RVers, and and I've seen it not just a couple times, but at least you know a few or more. And I find that amazing also to have such a big dog in such a small space, but I guess that's no worse than a lot of small dogs in a small space, but. <laughs> Anyway, wow, people, uh, I think it's great uh, if the dogs are happy and you're happy and and uh, they're being taken care of well. Um, I, I I do know that uh, Sher Sherry and I really take a lot of pride in keeping Cinder healthy and with all her vaccinations and can be kind of expensive. Uh, I, I can't imagine what it would be like to have several large dogs that I have to maintain with their shots, boosters, uh, down here to rattlesnake vaccine, which we've talked about, and uh, grooming and things like that. Uh, it's a lot of responsibility, so one thing to think about. And in fact, and then the other thing is how well do the pets handle being alone in the RV? Because especially down here in Phoenix, you can't leave, a, uh, even this time of year, uh, leave a pet in the car for any period of time because it's just too hot. So they got to be able to stay in the RV alone. And so... If you are going to have a pet, I would spend a lot of time trying to train them to be alone in the RV. And you can do that with webcams where you can watch them, leave them in the RV. Um, uh, like with Cinder, we kind of trained her that, hey, if you're, we're going to leave, but you're going to get a treat before we leave. She's all for it. And then uh, her first year, we had some barking issues, but uh, uh, she got over it. And uh, I think we did it. Uh, we had a webcam, so we can and we'd take off and go for a walk in the park for an hour, or do things intentionally, and then warn the neighbors that we're training the puppy, let us know if they hear anything. And so, uh, yeah, it took a little while, but uh, I guess you know if you're gonna have 
four or five dogs in your RV, are they staying calm when you're gone? And if you don't know, maybe you should leave a recorder on or leave a uh, or get a little webcam to keep an eye on the, on your pups and and see how well they're doing. Because I mean, you really we do have close quarters in all these RV parks, and we want to be courteous to our neighbors. And some people they just don't care. But it is very irritating to have a barking dog all you know while you're gone to the movies or gone shopping, and and, it can, and especially if it's late at night. Some people go to bed early. Yes, you have your rights. We all have our rights and freedoms and stuff. But you know there is RV rules of you know, when it's uh, it's appropriate or not. So anyway, do train your your animals uh, and and. Uh, and it's also always nice to know that our pets and, and all these animals have got good homes. And uh, if it, um, especially if you're a person that's picked up a lot of dogs that are from shelters and stuff, good for you. We appreciate that. But at the same time, we want them trained and uh, be uh, courteous to your neighbors. So, yeah, consider it. But get some tools so you can get those animals under control. I did it, and it wasn't hard. Um, took a little effort, but now I got two really well-trained pat pets. Our cat and our dog both do really well when we're gone. I have a question for you because I've actually been putting off something and I've actually started doing it today. Is when's the last time you clean the filters on your intakes to your air conditioner? Now I have two of them, plus we have a portable. Portable one's pretty easy. It's just a little thing in the back you pull up, and it's but it's amazing how dirty that gets. So I finally, which I should have done a long time ago, I've had this for quite a while, pulled the two intakes for a rear uh, air conditioner and pulled uh, the intake for the one up front, which is a direct uh, uh, AC unit. And yep, they're filthy. <laughs> And it's like so easy to ignore that kind of stuff, but it really, it really makes your air conditioners work a lot harder when they're trying to intake, you know, pull in, take air. So here's your reminder right now. When's the last time you cleaned your filters? And some of you guys will probably, well, I do it all the time. Well, some of us people aren't so good at it. <laughs> that may be me. So anyway, I'm helping to remind you guys. Uh, during this show, put me on pause and pull your filters and clean them off. I just use soap and water on ours. I just filled the sink with warm water and a little bit of soap water. I'm sure there's better things to do, ways of doing it. But I just washed them by hand and got them all cleaned up. They're drying out right now as we speak, and then I'll be putting them back in. And uh, I'll know that I have nice, clean filters, and it's good for good for your breathing. It's good for uh, keeping the dust down. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a round to it thing. And, and it, of course, while we're at it, which is another thing, I'm just reminding you of things I need to do. When's the last time you checked your battery fluid? And remember, if you, you once you check them, I and if they do need water, use distilled water. You don't want minerals in your water. And so that's my next thing I got to do is go out. I got two six volt batteries. I just bought them last summer. Well, it's been a year, <laughs> and I've never checked them, and yeah, I should. I know what I should be doing, but um, I should be checking those regularly like every other month. Uh, but yeah, so I'm reminding you too, when's the last time you checked your battery levels? Uh, of course, I'm not really using my batteries, but uh, um, I'm sure that uh, the little they get trickle charged once in a while. We have solar, and we do, but my charge controller is... Uh, not charging it's all off but it's still a good idea to check your batteries so there you go let's check our batteries let's check our filters and anything else we can think of of course it doesn't hurt to lubricate the slides and also uh, uh, put something or a treatment on the the rubber seals on your slides too to help protect them especially if you're down here in in warmer uh, temperatures like we are the sunshine's really tough on that and when I had my RV washed, I also had the uh, roof treated with a uh, rubber treatment that helps protect uh, the top and also uh, reflect UV rays from it. So, yeah, it's that time of year. Oh, it's always that time of year. And, of course, you guys are up north and got some weather. You guys got to worry about winterizing. Well, that's not an issue down here. <laughs> but uh, many years I did. So, 
Uh, yeah, winterizing, you can pay the consequences if you don't do that. You can damage hot water heaters, pipes, all kinds of goodies, uh, motors, things like that. So, yeah, get that pink stuff in there. Um, and do it right, Get and especially protect that uh, hot water heater. Uh, you don't want to damage that. That's going to cost you a mint to fix. So, uh, and some of these fittings are really a bear to get to in these RVs. So if you crack something on that behind a shower or something like that, can be a real pain and can damage uh, your floor because uh, you know water damage is just not good for RVs. So get on it, guys. Get that winterizing done. And and if you're down here in the south and don't have to worry about winterizing, take care of little things that need to be done. Me too. <laughs> We're in the same boat. Let's get let's get the work. Make our wives proud. <laughs> I think the other thing that's been kind of funny is I've actually been kind of like a little homesick for the Northwest. But I cured that really easy today by uh, uh, looking at some webcams <laughs> and checking out Bend, Oregon, and all that stuff where I used to live. And, uh, yeah, they got freezing roads, uh, black ice, uh, cold temperatures, which also would mean I'd have to winterize my RV. Uh, be worried about freezing. I'd be going through propane like crazy. And so it's really easy to forget so, uh, when you're full timing uh, what winter can be like. And so, yeah, if you need, if you're down south or you're traveling and you're kind of missing uh, the northwest or, or where you're from in the uh, northern states, yeah, just go on the weather cam, pull up a couple of traffic cams. And uh, take a look at the mountains and maybe even do a weather check. Uh, you'll be convinced why you're down here. So, yeah. I was cured really quick. I was uh, really uh, slapped with a little reality like, oh, yeah, that's what I don't have to deal with anymore. So, yeah, we're in the prime time down here. and uh, Get on down here to Central Oregon on uh, uh, Phoenix with us and uh, enjoy these nice temperatures or uh, we're still even getting up to 80 degrees occasionally, but I think we're hovering around 70 this week. And we have a little bit of cooler weather going by, but when they say that, they're talking like high 60s, lower 70s. That's cold weather here. So, yeah, uh, winterizing, I don't miss that. So, But we do <laughs> have to take care of things. And I also discovered, by the way, when I was putting my vent things back on, that the little holes that the screws hold the vents on up up on the roof are uh, not sticking. So I'm actually putting silicone into the holes so I can work new threads through it and without having to do anything fancy. So, yeah, it seems like every time you do a project, you get another project to do on top of that to fix the first project. So, yeah, RV life, gotta love it. You know, you never call, you never write. Anyway, this is a reminder to let you guys uh, know that we love hearing from you. Love the notes and comments we get from you. Uh, please get a chance. Go to rvtalkradio.com and go to the contact page. And you can shoot us a note right there. It's private. Or you can send me an email directly at rob at rvtalkradio. And let us know what you like us to talk about or have comments about things we've talked about. And, uh, yeah, we love to hear from you. Don't forget, we can also go, you can, well, you can go to our Facebook pages, which is uh, RV Talk Radio has their own Facebook. And go to the little button at the top. It says message, and that's private. We can, uh, we, that actually shows up on our cell phones. And we also have a Facebook called uh, RV Travel Buddy. And you can also talk to us from there. And, uh. A lot of times you guys give us some great things to talk about or you have feedback from something we talked about earlier. And um, that's great. So, yeah, when you get a chance, give us a holler. We'd appreciate it. I uh, also forgot I need to remind you guys is occasionally, well, it's, it's getting really hard, and I've told you this before, for us to watch um, all the channels out there. And, and I to this day, I still see new channels that actually been going for a while but i just now ever mentioned or seen and so uh really uh, i'm just asking you guys if 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 you're interested in being on our show and you have a channel we may not have heard of you just because we just aren't subscribed to that many platforms anymore because it's so hard to watch everything and so don't 
think uh, you're being rude or anything if you contact us and say, uh, would you be interested in interviewing us? Uh, we'll treat you with the greatest respect and uh, whether you get on the show or not. And uh, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Just, uh, it's just amazing how busy we get sometimes. And, and of course, we have our own personal life of RVing and lifestyle anyway. So sometimes I just can't sit in front of the computer and watch videos all the time. So I have to leave it up to you. And if you stumbled across us and and uh, you, you think you're a good fit, it has to be RV related or a product related or service related. Uh, yeah, we'd be happy to uh, talk to you and uh, possibly put you on this show. It'd be kind of fun. So uh, uh, the big part about that is just letting you know is don't be uh, shy. Just give us a holler uh, and uh, we'll treat you with the best respect and um uh, uh, next thing we normally do is give you a call right away and talk about it and find out if it's something you'd like to do and if it's beneficial to you you and us. So, yeah, give us a holler. And uh, other kind of uh, reports we have for just things that are going on with uh, our Sherry and I is uh, people haven't been seeing us doing any videos on the boat. And uh, the only reason for that is we're kind of in transition. We're kind of doing uh, sprucing it up a little bit we're um, doing some uh, putting some little weatherproof seals in the doors and and just little things the uh, cosmetic that we wanted to do we thought we we're going to put a fish finder in it but we're kind of thinking ah we better wait we have some big projects coming up in the spring and we are kind of like ah eh, let's just kind of cool it on the funds uh, other than the fact we just brought a new computer in, uh, we are looking at a couple of cameras that we might be thinking about. But yeah, um, little things are cooking. Can't really announce them all yet, but we, uh, with a boat, we're kind of thinking about putting over in Lake Sororo, which is really not that far away. And uh, thinking about doing that at the beginning of December. And uh, then we'll get some, uh, that's a beautiful lake, and I'd love to get some photography for you guys to see. A uh, very cute place to go, and uh, uh, we'll just see how that goes. Uh, in the meantime, we actually even put a tarp over the top of the boat just to protect it from the sun. Even though it's wintertime here, it's still sun. <laughs> yeah. In fact, today, it's actually kind of cloudy, and uh, I think they even just said it might even rain. Yes, it does rain occasionally here in Arizona, so it's really kind of a bummer because you're so used to brightness and, and blue skies, and you walk out and it's like, what's wrong? Something's wrong here. It's you just don't see clouds in the sky that you know complete grayness, and it's really an odd feeling. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's not an odd feeling if you live up north, but yeah, it's uh, <laughs> uh, things are cooking. Got some products. We're doing some product reviews. In fact, I think we're going to do a product review and the new computer we just picked up. And uh, uh, just got a lot of work to do. And it's all kind of behind the scenes. And I know it's not that interesting that folks uh, uh, don't see that. But yeah, uh, lots of work, lots of videos and things like that. Actually, as far as RV videos, we actually will be slowing down. We don't have a whole lot of stuff right now because we've been working on all kinds of other projects and so it's been hard to get videos done but we're working on it we'll have some out eventually i think this week will be just uh rv talk radio and uh some other uh stuff for our other channels but yeah um busy but yeah not getting a lot of videos out we'll try to uh get those going again so we appreciate your patience we love the feedback please like i was telling you earlier please uh give us a holler and say hi just if you just want to say hi we appreciate it um sherry's also suffering from a cold and been down sick she's still you know getting around and stuff like that but she hasn't been feeling too good and she works you know in town so she gets exposed to people with the sniffles and stuff and she's got the full cases of sniffles and just getting over hurting her foot when she fell down uh, the other day and uh so yeah it's been kind of just uh <laughs> One, last two weeks have been kind of just odd but yeah move on just the other day I uh, introduced you guys to a couple they're traveling nurses and they became really good friends of ours it's Chad and Valerie and 
Um, they, I was really sad. I told you on the show that they were heading out and going, uh, I think they went to Missouri, something like that. Anyway, they went up north. And, uh, but they've kept in touch. They got, and they were getting married and they got married and they've been sending us pictures and we've just been loving it. I feel like good friends at the same time. I sometimes even feel like a little family. So it's kind of nice. The good news is two of them is they're coming back. Uh, they won't be in this park cause it's hard to get into this time of year. Uh, but, um, the good news is, and I know they listen to our show, as uh, we're looking forward to seeing them again, uh, we won't be able to see them as much as we did before because they won't be in the same park. But uh, the other great news is they just announced to us, I don't know how many people they told their friends to, but they just bought, went from a trailer, which I told you I really liked the trailer they had before, uh, but they moved up to uh, uh, a fifth wheel and they got a landmark. So I'm looking forward to them coming on down catching up with them and i hope i get a good tour of their new landmark um very uh <laughs> i i know they're thinking about you know growing their family as they go and the uh, rv is perfect um tool for them to go from their uh, different assignments as far as being traveling nurses so it makes really good sense to have a, a home-like rv and if they ex decide to expand their family in the future uh, they should be able to do something a little bit more comfortable like that in a fifth wheel than the trailer they had so i can certainly see why and of course they gain a lot more storage so i'm really going to be curious to see they just bought it and they're actually just now to uh, bringing it down so i'm sure you know as well as I do when you buy a new rig, uh, <laughs> they're going to discover things that aren't working right and things like that. Or uh, uh, It's just how it is. So I'd be curious to hear their story. And as soon as we catch up with them, uh, I know we're going to uh, make sure and have dinner with them. And hopefully we get to see their rig and find out some of their stories, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, but anyway, welcome back. I'm looking forward to seeing those two, and I'm hoping to share more of their stories because they're kind of what's kind of neat about those is they're brand new RVers, and they don't even kind of throw themselves in that category. Um, but you know, I go, I, I say, well, welcome to the RV world, and they're kind of like, look at me, like, well, we're just doing this because this is works for us. We're not actually considered being part of a community, so they. Uh, um, it's just interesting to talk to them because their uh, paradigm as far as what the RV is for and the lifestyle is kind of what we've been trying to tell people about and on the show is that it's just not the old get in the RV you know, at, right after you retire and either snowbird or travel the United States the rest of your life. It's just not that way. Yes, there's lots of people doing that and that's cool, but um, the RV is a tool. It's a tool to fit people's lifestyles and all kinds for all ages so yeah it's just always interesting to see these stories and then and somebody or family opens up to us and kind of let, uh, lets us tell their story and we appreciate that so welcome back uh chad and valerie we're looking forward to seeing you and uh can't wait to see their new landmark that'll be kind of fun to review that so we'll see we'll let you know what we find out i uh, also wanted to remind you guys is uh we're still very happy with our RV lock and uh, um, they're not really a sponsor with us, but they've always been affiliated with us and they've been very kind about leaving a discount for our, our clients so or listeners. And so uh, if you're still thinking about getting an RV lock, which is a remote keypad system with um, either as a keypad, you can use a remote or you can still use a manual key. And uh, Sherry and I have had ours almost a year now. Well, I'm getting there. And uh, we still are just loving it. So if you're interested in getting a RV lock, we still have the link on our site. Just go to um, any of our sites, uh, RV Talk Radio or uh, RV Travel Buddy. Press the button that says Product Reviews. And it's down in the lower section. There's a link right there. It takes you right to the site. Use our code that's on there. It's a special code that they uh, assign to us for our listeners. And you can get a significant discount on buying your first RV lock if you'd like to get one. Uh, I still, to this day, are saying I, we've liked the product. It's been dependable. Haven't had any trouble with it. It's been uh, reliable. Quality seems good. 
And we still get people going, wow, I got to get one of those. And I was like, well, if you want one, we still got the discount code on there. So just go to our website, go to product reviews, and it'll take you right there. And if uh, you have any problem finding it, just shoot us a note and I'll get the link to you. But yeah, that's a great discount. So give us a holler and then we'll get you, uh, uh, save you some money. The other thing I kind of like to hear feedback from you guys is uh, the holidays. Like, does anybody actually have Thanksgiving in their RV or do they typically go to somebody's family, you know, go to a home and, and catch up with family and friends? Um, and then, you know, I know some folks that they're kind of more independent, but they still won't, you know, they don't have Thanksgiving at the RV, but they'll go to a special restaurant, especially if they're single or, uh, or uh, you know, the family's not around. They'll go, uh, like my folks, they always go to Black Bear Restaurant or up in uh, Central Oregon. <laughs> and, uh, we went there one year with them once, and it was like, man, do they feed you good. Sherry and I, since we didn't have a lot of family in Washington, we used to go up to uh, Anacortes to uh, um, a restaurant up there specialized in turkey dinners. And, and uh, you really you had to get reservations uh, for that. And it wasn't fancy, but it was just good old-fashioned, ch- good turkey dinner. And, uh, yeah, and so I'd be kind of curious to find out if you guys want to share some of your uh, holiday stories of what you traditionally do or are going to do different this year. Some people may not do anything, just do a special vacation. And then, uh, of course, we'd love to hear your feedback of what you guys do for Christmas. Um, do you decorate your RVs all out? Do you put a tree in them? Sherry and I, I don't know about you guys, we have a heck of a time putting any kind of tree up. I don't think I think we'd have the problem with a house, too. We have a little mini tree. And it's cuter in the Dickens, but every time I pull it out, it's like a total target, a total target for the cat. And the cat just cannot leave it alone. And of course, she knocks things off, and then Cinder gets into them, and they get. Uh, it's just a, I don't know what to do. And so, <laughs> I'm kind of thinking, oh, maybe I should just glue the ornaments on the thing. But it's a little fold-up tree. Uh, uh, I don't know, maybe it's about three feet tall, and, we, and it, it's a cute little thing. We like to decorate the RV a little bit, but <laughs> it's the animals that keep us from getting it uh, decorated the way we want. Um, the other thing I'd be kind of curious is, does anybody decorate their RV from the outside with Christmas lights and stuff like that? And uh, If you have some photos or anything you guys want to send us, we'd be happy to put them on our sites. But yeah, we'd love to hear your holiday stories. And so... Uh, uh, once again, just contact us through the website or contact us through Facebook or even uh, if you want to, we have a group page for RV Travel. You can uh, post some of your pictures there. We'd love to see them. So, yeah, holidays are coming. And sure like to it'd be cute to see some, what some of the um, – uh, I, I mean, my, well, the other thing I didn't even think about is uh, what goes on in your RV park. Do they do something special for uh, Thanksgiving? And does your RV park do something special for Christmas? I'd uh, love to hear the stories on that, too. So, yeah, share, 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 people. We want to hear from you. This is about all we have for you this week. we uh been kind of busy, but we haven't uh, had a lot of RV stories to bring up front right now, and we apologize. Um, and we, you know, we got things cooking that we'll be sharing with everybody as we go. Anyway, but it's really great to hear from you guys. I know the holidays are coming. Uh, the week that you hear this video, um, this show will be Thanksgiving week. And so we wish everybody a great Thanksgiving. And we are very grateful and thankful for you, our listeners. And, of course, Sherry and I are very grateful for the lifestyle that we have and to be comfortable as we are. And we certainly hope that's the same for you. So, anyway, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. And I, I really hope that... Especially if you're going to get the catch up with family and grandkids and and mothers and fathers and stuff like that. That this goes wonderful. And all I can say is try to be, try to take the moment to be grateful for the fact that, especially you never know each year if uh, things change, people pass, and things like that. So take the time to really soak in and smell the roses that you're with family. And you had the opportunity to speak good, bad, or indifferent. Um, you never know. So that's what Thanksgiving is all about. 
And uh, Sherry and I will be uh, uh, enjoying Thanksgiving with our daughter and our grandkids, and we're looking forward to that. And uh, <laughs> and eating some really good food. And of course, we're doing all the run to the store, get the goodies, and then and contribute to the dinner and all that. So it'll be kind of fun. So we're going to actually have a little bit of a traditional Thanksgiving with our daughter. So we're looking forward to that. So anyway, we're going to head on out. I want to thank you very much for listening. Please take the time to subscribe to our podcast. Get the opportunity to take a look at our videos. Please subscribe. Share our shows with everybody. We appreciate it. We love your feedback. And please take the time to like like our videos when you're watching those. And share us with the world. We appreciate it. It helps us and it allows us to grow, which allows us to do more for you. So take care. Have a great holiday, everyone. And we'll catch you in the next one at episode 72. So take care now and be an RVer. Bye now. Thank you for listening and watching RV Talk Radio. Please take the time to subscribe to our podcast or our videos.